This little guy, Banjo, is so cute and cuddly. Man's best friend has also proven to be one of man's best protectors out here in the snow. When it storms, dogs work with ski patrollers and also avalanche forecasters to make sure that people like you and me are safe. Low traverse. You can see Gabe over there. He's your witness. Okay. Wasatch Backcountry Rescue is an organization of the nine ski resorts here along the Wasatch Front. We do everything from assist our county and local sheriff and police departments in rescue in the backcountry and inbounds on our ski resorts that we work for. This school that we're here at today is our international rescue dog school. We have 35 teams here from Alaska to uh, Montana, as far down as New Mexico. It's the place to be this week if you want to do avalanche dog work. Here, sit. Good. That's very good. That's very good. Yes. This is Frank's first class. He is almost six months old. So he's a little bit young to be in, but he's doing really well. Search. They love the really high-pitched baby talk screaming. It's very, very positive for them. This is the coveted toy. Every dog has a different toy. Uh, some dogs respond to food uh, rewards as well. But uh, this is the reason that our dogs are hunting for people under the snow, is they think those people have their coveted toy. You ready? You ready? Search! Basically take instinct, their drive to hunt and find something and turn it into playing and, and rewarding with a game of tug of war. So it's all instinctual. We did the breeding of the dogs I thought would make really good avalanche dogs. Mom had wonderful attributes and dad had four master hunt titles under his belt and uh, lots of energy, and I, I got the pick of the litter of nine little pups. Probably one of the toughest decisions I've ever made. Every single one of them would have made a great avalanche dog, but uh, yeah, little Frankie was the runt of the litter and ran harder than the rest of his brothers and sisters. Got the job. You know, if we go to an avalanche site, you know, it's just a field of white. And I've got to be able to know him, and he's got to be able to know me well enough that we can clear that site if nobody's in it or if there is somebody in it. So it takes quite a partnership. Uh, it would take 400 ski patrolmen three days to do the same amount of work he can do in 20 minutes. The dogs are going to be first on scene in the event that someone is not wearing an avalanche transceiver. I mean, they are able to gather a scent and pinpoint exactly where that person's buried. And they have been really critical and important to uh, finding the people that have been buried under the snow. These dogs are professionals. I say that with a straight face in so much as they have received years of training. Search. We have to realize that if there's a call out because of an avalanche accident, we already know the conditions are dangerous. And so in that way, more than just the rescuers themselves, the dogs are sticking their necks out as well to go into dangerous conditions to hopefully save a life. If you're heading into the backcountry, you have to have the gear. You have to have the avalanche transceiver, the beacon, the shovel. But most importantly, in my view, you have to be armed with a weapon of knowledge. You have to know what the conditions are. We put out avalanche forecasts every day from fall to spring, telling people what the danger is so they can make informed and wise decisions on where to go in the backcountry to keep people on top of the greatest on Earth rather than buried beneath it. We're up here in Little Cottonwood Canyon. This is the birthplace of snow science and avalanche research in North America. In the late 
30s, the Forest Service was going to have a snow ranger to help with snow safety. And at that time, it was all just sort of passive insofar as just closing areas when they thought that the danger was going to be significant, you know, to protect the, to the skiers. At the end of the war, they brought in Monty Atwater, who was part of the 10th Mountain Division, um, to come up here. And of course, you know, Monty, just coming from the war, thought, you know, we've got to have active control work. And so, you know, what do the soldiers think of? We've got to have explosives. Here in Utah, as, as well as other places in the West, you know, we use artillery. You know, the howitzers. We have the avalanchers that from far away you can shoot and sight in and target the starting zones and trigger these avalanches um, to keep it safe for the public. Ready to fire? Fire! This is the most avalanche prone canyon in North America. We create the majority of them. We want to make the avalanche happen when we have the slope cleared. We know there's nobody down in or around it. Uh, we are working with Mother Nature. She does surprise us every once in a while. Uh, that's why we do have the dog. You want to go running? But yeah, we're always training ready to go. So it's been four years. He's been uh, all over the world training with me. Let's go, big guy. You know, he went from just looking at me with eyes wide open and hoping he does the right thing to knowing he does the right thing now. It blows me away all the time watching just how incredible he is at his job. You know, just that little breeze that carries that little bit of human scent. He's on it, and he's all for it. It's, it, it's incredible. Little heart of gold. We are in such an amazing and unparalleled place. You can go literally from walking through the mall downtown to into the Dragon's Lair within 45 to 60 minutes. And very quickly, we can be into the wilderness. When we go into the mountains, there is a chance that we may not come back. Um, in the scope of my work, I have put friends in body bags. And that experience changes you. We have to appreciate every time that we go into the mountains as a gift. This is Utah is made possible in part by the George S. and Dolores Story Eccles Foundation, the Utah Office of Tourism, the Lawrence T. and Janet T. D. Foundation, and the contributing members of KUED. Thank you.